My name is Kieran O'Connor and I lecture in archaeology at the School of Geography, Archaeology and Irish Studies at NUI Galway and we are currently in front of uh, Roscommon Castle. Roscommon Castle is, we, we, we could say, was in its time one of the finest, if not the finest, of castles built by the Anglo-Normans in 13th century Ireland. But again, uh, like all other castles, or many other castles, it was inhabited for a number of centuries and we can see in the late 16th century it was a, lo a large portion of it, particularly the eastern and northern sides of the castle, were substantially rebuilt. We can say that there is a top-rate late 13th century royal castle here at Roscommon, built, really built, in the late 1270s, although started in 1269. The raison d'etre for the castle is to basically keep Hugh O'Connor and the O'Connors under control something that ultimately doesn't work and by 1360 the O'Connors, the descendants of Hugh O'Connor if you like, have taken over the castle and we have the O'Connors living here for 200 years. There is little in the way in terms of architectural remains uh, for that long period of Gaelic Irish occupation and this is something that we see at a number of Anglo-Norman castles. For example, Ballantubber around here, Green Castle in Donegal. The Irish take it over, but they, they, they repair it, they use it, but they don't seem to carry out um, any massive under, building undertakings themselves. Now that, to me, when we look at the overall evidence, is not because they're not able to do that or they don't have the wealth and know-how. They do but it's just the way Gaelic society is organised. You know, things like, uh, you know, partable inheritance, things like that goes against uh, the, uh, the, the, the Irish putting big money into large secular buildings. With the gradual English reconquest of Ireland, Roscommon Castle, the O'Connors are, are more or less told to leave Roscommon Castle in 1569. They surrender it to Sir Henry Sidney and then in the late 1570s Roscommon is granted to Sir Nicholas Malby, a you know, cavalry commander, administrator, new English conquistadore, interesting man, t ruthless man, and, it, and also he becomes Governor of Connacht and he turns the northern half of the inner ward into a really massive fortified house. He also creates a garden to the north and east of the castle. B because of uh, circumstances of conquest and upheaval, that garden is fortified, but we can imagine that that garden reflected the symmetry of the house. Order, civilization, a statement of loyalty to the crown, etc. A number of people have worked here. Harold Leask, uh, Margaret Murphy, Dan Titch Tyler, Paul Nasons, myself, numerous others. What type of approach do we take? Well, we take what we call a kind of multidisciplinary approach, which is we look in, at uh, the architectural remains, try and work out phases. We look at the historical sources, a little bit of excavation, archaeological excavation, geophysical survey, looking at early maps. You know, th this, th this is a, what we call a kind of interdisciplinary, um, multidisciplinary uh, approach. And by doing that, we come up with an idea how the castle functioned and how it developed over time.